the aquifer that we are talking about here, besides all the historical importance, the geological and everything like that, we are talking about a clean aquifer, probably the most important aquifer of the country. And we are contaminating it day by day. Uh, lots of the uh, tourists that come down here don't realize it, but the sewage system is fragile here, as well as uh, uh, the entire underground aquifer. And what I've seen more than anything else is the impact of uh, the, the sewage discharges uh, affecting the quality of the underwater uh, aquifer that is basically the source of fresh water for this entire area. The activities that are impacting the area is uh, this overall growth of the resorts and then of course all the people who have come here and live here to support the jobs for the resorts. It's a four-lane super highway that connects uh, Cheddar Mall to Cancun. It has opened up the door to all the development. Once that four-lane highway was completed, the mega resorts started to open up up and down the Riviera Maya, and that's when the load on the ecosystem increased drastically. That was a turning point when that four-lane road was completed, absolutely. And they're talking about a new airport now in Tulum. If that happens, the load on the environment will increase uh, geometrically, and who knows what will happen then. The problem here is that everything is interconnected. The aquifer that you see so clean here goes as clean as it looks to the ocean. We are very close to the ocean. It feeds the mangroves, and then it feeds the reef as well. And anything we do here, or worse, anything we do up there, it's going to go here, it's going to go to the mangroves, it's going to go to the reef, and we are going to be contaminating everything just by contaminating the main source of water. The aquifer, which is underground water, it's the sole source of fresh water, but at the same time, it's the place where we are putting our waste. The water from the secondary treatment plants, it's been injected to 60 to 100 meters, like hormones, pharmaceuticals, algae will start blooming because there is more nutrients, and the balance between the algae and the coral will change, gaining more area the algae compared to the coral. So we will start losing the coral reef and we will have just algae in the reef. And that's a major impact because the reef is the most biodiverse ecosystem in the world, more than the rainforest. I've noticed a lot of red algae grown on the reefs and uh, red algae is a bad sign because it will smother the soft corals and eventually it will smother the uh, hard corals and kill it. And I think it's already happening, and I think we'll notice it more and more in the future. Here, it's no filter, it's just a few meters of rock. It's not a thick roof. The aquifer is very close to the ground. This ground is very porous, it doesn't retain the water. The water is filtered immediately, and it goes basically how it comes to the aquifer and then to the mangroves and the ocean. But here it's not the end, because you would say, well, who cares, let's contaminate over there, we don't drink the water from there, we take the water from the other side, upstream, let's say. Doesn't work that way. We have counterflows. There is a flow indeed from the Caribbean towards the Gulf of Mexico under the Yucatan Peninsula by all these poros and deep water systems that takes salt water from the Caribbean to the Gulf of Mexico in a very slow flow. Neighbor system can have flows in different directions. So, are you going to contaminate here? Oh yeah, and you are going to have contamination upstream, downstream, neighbor systems everywhere. This report, the report card uh, for the Mesoamerican Reef, um, I think should be required reading for everyone who comes down there because it's sad uh, what's happened since 2008 when the first report was published. Um, things didn't seem too bad then. But it's amazing how things have uh, deteriorated to the point where the 2010 uh, report basically says if we don't do something soon, we're going to lose this entire reef system. I, I, I'm a bit frustrated by the fact that this report has came out this year and very few people know anything about it. Um, it plainly shows that we're headed on the road to total destruction of the reef system, better known as the Mesoamerican Reef. And uh, we can't let that happen. 
there are some other places in the world with these kind of systems, but they are not as far big and as far important and as far complex as these systems. We can find full skeletons of mammoths, of prehistoric cats, of human activity from the Ice Age. We have already found in these areas already registered five human skeletons for, for, that are more than 10,000 years old, intact in the cenotes, full skeletons. And the findings are continuing, on, I, won't, I don't want to say every day, but let's say every month. Just a black hole that recently was, was discovered has at least 15 prehistoric skeletons perfectly preserved. You can see the teeth of the tigers, about this size, perfectly intact. In what place can you find this? These are not even fossils. These are full, untouched skeletons preserved by the water, by the crystal clear water. And over this place and next to this place, they want to build an international airport. It's absurd. It's, it's just unthinkable. It's so stupid. It's incredible that this is happening. So if we don't get the international awareness, we are going to lose these places. You want to see a place like this? You are going to have to see a video because this is going to be gone very, very soon. This is a tourist region. Tourists want to see natural ecosystems. They don't want to see huge hotels all over the place that they can't get to because there's no access to the water. You have to leave access to the water and you have to let make sure that that water is livable for the various species because that's where an awful lot of tourism comes from. So we are affecting in that way the main source for the economy, which is the coral reef, which at the end produces the crystal clear waters of the Caribbean. We are already looking forward to, be, to make these places, all the aquifer of the Mayan Riviera, to become a world heritage site, or a group of world heritage sites. Problem. We contact UNESCO and UNESCO told us that we needed a local protection. We need Mexican federal protection to make this happen. And this is not happening. We are already asking the government to do it and they don't care. They have no interest in this. They have priorities with touristic development of these areas. So something has to happen in a different way. International pressure has to come to make the Mexican government has no, have no choice to do it. That's the only hope we have here. So if you can see some, something of this outside, just start doing something. From inside, we are hopeless. We are not going to be able to do anything from inside. It has to come from outside. We don't flush toilet paper in the toilets because of the fragile septic systems. I know that the government supposedly has some control around the cenotes and has the power to, to control how much they're developed, uh, but at the same time, development is out of control. I'm, I, I fear that the, the infrastructure cannot support the development at the rate it's going, and I worry that we're not thinking far enough ahead as to the impacts that we're going to have on this area. And it's just a matter of time at this rate before water like you see behind me won't be swimmable. It'll be contaminated with, with sewage and E. coli. Right now, we are treating the water to make it drinkable, but it will be much more expensive if it's polluted. I think it's time to stop the contamination, control the areas that are already polluted, mainly Tuluma, Playa del Carmen, and really, really try to reinforce and try to do new rules for human development to avoid more contamination and especially to avoid uh, an irreversible damage to these places.
So it's about that, just about spreading the voice and making the people from outside make that pressure towards the Mexicans and especially the, uh, towards the Mexican government, against the Mexican government immediately. It's urgent because this is coming fast and this is coming way, way more irresponsible than it, what, that it was just a few years ago. This is being destroyed by day. So I hope you can do something about it.